It was freshman year at State University. I lost my job in the mess hall because I was always late, always tired, and always hungover. I met with Stephen for lunch. He has been my best friend since grade school. I explained my dilemma. I needed a job for rent and bills, but it couldn't be too time consuming or physically demanding. My grades were suffering. Stephen always wanted to give great advice, ask if I had ever participated in a focus group. A focus group? I laughed. Stephen, I need a real job that makes real money. Stephen hesitated before saying, You'd be surprised how much they will pay you just to sit, listen, and give a little feedback. Hell, they might even buy you lunch. I smiled. He was right. It couldn't hurt to give it a try. I found an article for a medical market research study that paid $400 a day. That was more than I made in a week at the mess hall. I sent an email to a recruiter at the office who got a lot of information about me. They even ran a background screening. And just like that, I was on my way to my first focus group. The group was small but diverse. I was the token white college kid. There was a burly Latino middle-aged construction worker who just looked grumpy. A soccer mom who resembled my Aunt Vicky with a screechy high voice that made me unconsciously wince. The last participants were two heavy set and rather tall black women in their mid 20s. They kept to themselves, but I think they were talking shit about me. After about five minutes in the office lobby, we had a quick briefing with Miss Janet. Any form of recording device, including cell phones, were to be completely turned off and not allowed in the testing area. Any form of communication, be it verbal or nonverbal, were prohibited. A non-disclosure agreement was signed in the Terms and Conditions section of the individual participant's contract. Miss Janet then took us into room C9. It reminded me of an interrogation room from the movies. We were seated behind a two-way mirror where we could remain anonymous while observing and participating in the study. We each had a cubicle-sized area with partitions reaching the ceiling as to not disturb the other participants and for the privacy of all involved. The room was small and extremely well lit. The freshly polished floors and spotless white paint seemed to amplify the feeling of cleanliness. The room was empty except for the mirror and one chair that is similar to what you would see in a dentist office. A man in his mid-fifties with slicked back hair and pale skin entered the room through a thick door that was padded and seemed difficult to open, sporting a Dolce & Gabbana two-piece suit that seemed like something a much younger man would wear. He exhibited a true confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for your attendance this evening. My name is Dr. Bill Rogers. I am the Senior Data Analyst for Artec Research. Tonight marks the launch of our first trial testing of Hexcon's new Temporary Neuralink, or TNL for short, as Miss Janet and I like to call it. Bill smiled and paused dramatically as if, waiting for laughter. Neural link transmitters are the next breakthrough in science. You may have heard Elon Musk and his test with animals, which is obviously admirable, but we are writing a new chapter in the evolution of man. Memory playback is an exciting new technology designed to help those with memory issues, be it Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, Parkinson's, or post-traumatic stress disorder, just to name a few. 
Tonight, you will take part in a controlled environment where your participation will make the difference. Using a very basic interface, you will guide the test volunteer through a traumatic experience. During trauma, the brain seeks an escape and will try to suppress the memories. Studies have shown only by facing the demon with open arms is genuine healing a possibility. The controls are simple. Think about a VCR if you're old enough, or better yet, like a closed circuit television used by security. You will be able to slow down the memory, rewind the memory, replay the memory, whatever it takes to make the breakthrough. This test is a first of its kind, and we do have an expert medical staff on standby. The volunteer has signed many of the same forms as you, and there is no need to worry about any form of legal ramifications, be it civil or criminal. The study is randomized, so out of the five of you, only one person will really have control of the experience. Please keep in mind, the longer the patient endures this procedure, the more intense the effects will be. Now that we've got all that mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's meet Beth. The door opened as two large orderlies escorted a small brunette to the chair. Her face seemed irritated and red, like she'd had an allergic reaction or had been picking at it. There were scabs mixed with moderate acne. She seemed to have a hard time keeping her balance, and she leaned heavily on her escorts. When seated in the chair, the men secured her ankles and wrist with a leather strap. She looked to the mirror and smiled. I smiled back awkwardly, forgetting that Beth couldn't see any of us, only the mirror. Dr. Bill approached Beth warmly, exchanging pleasantries before placing the temporary neural link on her head. It looked pretty cheesy, with different colored lights and wires popping out everywhere. It's only a prototype. Our interest lies in the functionality, not the aesthetics of the product, explained the doctor. This be some Bill Nye shit, joked one of the black women before the other quickly shushed her. Miss Janet cleared her throat as she distributed some no-name iPads for the survey. Dr. Bell continued, Miss Janet is distributing your electronic interfaces, which you should be able to operate with the greatest of ease. If not, you may need to review your contract with us regarding payment. When instructed, you will have total control of a 20-second memory clip. You will be given five minutes to review the footage. I hit play on the tablet, and it looked weird. It wasn't making any sense at first. Oh, okay, she's... She's shit-faced. She's obviously had way too much to drink. What's she doing? Come on, she's... She's gonna drive? She's hauling ass. This is stupid. She's gonna... End of the clip. What the fuck? All right, so I didn't know what to do with the clip. I couldn't add music or a cool filter, so I just looped it. Or someone else had the same idea, there's no telling, it's just a totally randomized study. Well, not so random, I do have a 1 in 5 chance. Beth seemed very uncomfortable. She was jerking at the restraints and mumbling something. The doctor let the clip loop for a total of a minute and a half. Beth, can you hear me? asked Dr. Bill. He repeated the question and she answered yes. How do you feel? Do you remember that night? I'm okay. I, I remember a little. Do you remember leaving? The doctor paused. Beth! I don't know. Beth seemed frustrated. I said I don't know. Beth's eyes widened. Her nostrils flared. Okay, okay, Beth, just relax. It's perfectly normal for you not to remember at this point. If you want us to help you, 
We need to move on to the next clip. Okay, Doc. Beth seemed to be gaining some sense of composure. I received a message on my great value tablet. It was the next clip. Seemed to be the same clip as last time. I don't know why anyone would want to pay this kind of money watching some drunk teenager joyride. She really seemed to be picking up some speed. She was driving highly erratically. Just ran another stop sign. She's gonna, yeah, she, she lost control. I really couldn't tell what happened. I was having issues with a shitty tablet. All I could do was have the clip repeat at real time. Nothing was clear. Sometimes you just gotta fake it till you make it, you know, voila. Another clip edited, just like the last one. Pay me. When the clip played, it wasn't mine. It was edited. I could see she literally passed out behind the wheel. There were screams. The audio had been boosted. I could tell there was at least one more person in the car with her. The clip ended with screams. The doctor gave Beth a full three minutes of this clip. Beth began to convulse involuntarily in the chair, pulling harder at the restraints. I could see a trickle of blood tarnishing the sparkling white floor. She seemed to be choking at times, spitting and gagging. Beth, the doctor said before repeating multiple times. Beth was not responding. Dr. Bell sent a quick message and almost instantaneously the medical team entered. Three paramedics put Beth on a gurney and wheeled her out of the observation room. When working with experimental procedures, we often have small hiccups. I'm sure Beth is just processing the information her own way. Let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break. Dr. Bill spoke quickly as he exited the room. We all went outside, the whole group. We needed to get some air. I desperately wanted to discuss the happenings of the evening with my fellow participants. However, there's that confidentiality agreement, which could leave my ass as broke as I was when I walked in. I'd come too far to sacrifice a month's rent. When we returned to the room, Beth was back in her chair, strapped in, and appeared to be sedated. According to the doctor, the third clip should be the last, and we can get the hell out of this place and off this ghetto-ass wannabe iPad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Following our last exercise, all of you will be able to fill out your survey forms and give us some valuable feedback. I thank you again. Beth, are you feeling better now? I'm straight, replied Beth. That's good, Beth. Now, is there anything you could remember from the last clip before our break? I was at a party with Dan. We were drinking gin and juice and smoked a fat blazer. I was twisted. Dan's sister drank all the sudden D. And we was about to roll the spot, get right. I hadn't really heard Beth speak before, but her accent was very urban. I felt a vibration on the desk, almost like a big fart. And just the shit tablet letting me know I got the last clip. And this one was really taking a lot longer to load. When I tried refreshing, everything froze. I was starting to think about not getting paid again, and that's when I heard the soccer mom scream. I could tell the other participants had seen the clip. The soccer mom was weeping now. Thank you, everybody. This concludes our survey, stated Miss Janet as she entered our area to reclaim the tablets. Everyone, please remember your contract with us and rules pertaining to confidentiality. It was at that moment that the Latino construction worker kicked out the two-way mirror. He was cursing in some strange language. He carefully but quickly entered the room with Dr. Bill and Beth. You deserve to die for what you did. The big Latino was hot now. His muscles bulged. Sir, please, just relax. Take it easy. The doctor pleaded to no avail. 
Just as the big man was preparing to charge, the orderlies rushed in, tackling him to the ground. Dr. Bill moved quickly to get Beth to safety. Just relax, Beth! The doctor shouted in a very not relaxed tone while releasing her from the restraints. Beth moved fast once released from the chair, only to pick up a piece of the broken mirror. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah! Beth dug the shard of glass deep within her inner forearm and pulled hard to her wrist. Her vital fluid covered the doctor, who was less than a foot away. Her severed veins sprayed like an out-of-control garden hose, covering the once pristine ivory floors in a dark crimson. I had never seen that much blood. The paramedics entered after a seeming eternity, probably less than a minute, to apply a tourniquet. Beth was back on the gurney and out the door. Dr. Bill seemed rather shaken up. The fact that he pissed his pants was a dead giveaway. He was actually crying like a little bitch. As for the rest of the participants, I never saw them again. I know it was hard for us all. Who knows, maybe we'll all end up using that same neural apparatus to help our post-traumatic stress disorder.